on the drive garage. Again, just a little quick one. Um, it's been pouring, pouring down here. We've had some uh, some crazy rain totals. I think we're somewhere about the um, 800, 900 millimeter range where I live here. Some places have had uh, about 17 to 1900 millimeters in uh, southeast Queensland, and there's some pretty serious flooding going on. Um, a lot of places are, uh, are underwater. Some houses, uh, and we're talking two-story houses, are uh, underwater, and businesses, and things like, uh, there's a photograph I saw in uh, Lismore, which is in uh, northern New South Wales, um, of the McDonald's in Lismore, and the big McDonald's sign that you see there, that's probably, maybe, I don't know, eight, nine meters tall, or something like that. Um, because the water level is probably just a meter underneath that, so that whole McDonald's is just gone, and every other shop in there is gone. Um, places south of us, uh, Mwollumbar and, and whatnot, are um, uh, washed out, and uh, all, all around me, we've got, we've got closed roads, we've got landslides, we've got trees down, and um, it's, uh, it's pretty hectic. So anyway, I haven't had a chance to really get down and do anything last couple of days. Um, just basically because of the because of the, the wet weather and, and whatnot. So um, yeah, we're going to uh, do a little bit of work this afternoon. Um, I've had two days off work basically because I can't get to work, and um, tomorrow I've got to go to work. So it'll be an early night tonight. Um, what I needed to do, which I didn't do, and I said I would do, was to weld the two pieces together. So I'm gonna do that today. And what I've also got to do quickly, if I can, is to uh, get up underneath the, the cowl of the, um, of the Jeep body tub. Um, I've got some rust in there. It, I think what happened is when I had the tub upside down when I was working on it, all the uh, metal shavings from the, uh, just cutting the metal and, and the grinder all accumulated under there and sort of packed it together and the moisture got into that and um, created some rust. So I've got some photos I'll, I'll, um, I'll put up on the, on the video to show you. But I've got to kind of get in there and <clears throat> scrape some of that out. I hit it with the, uh, the wire brush and the wire wheel and, and get the primer back on it before it, it starts getting pretty uh, pretty serious because it's it's um, it's not the surface rust it's actually some pretty crusty kind of stuff and it's been sitting there for a while which isn't good when it's hundred percent humidity so what we'll do is uh, we'll get this welded up real quick and I'll show you that put together whack the primer onto it and that'll be that part done and then hopefully the next lot of stuff I'll show you is um, working under the tub Alrighty. So, done, okay, plug welds, pretty good. There's maybe a couple that didn't quite fill the hole, um, but I'm not too concerned about that too much. Penetration on the back, considering it's got primer on it, um, I guess it'll be okay. But uh, it's, it's gonna be bolted in here anyway this is this is this is bolts for the um for that shroud that radiator um, brace whatever you want to call it so um this is this part here is for the front grill okay or well, if you look at it like that so that that's for the the front grill and the the um the the, the bush guards for the for the lights 
and on the insides obviously the the radiator brace will go along here okay so what i'm going to do now it's just going to um give that a quick clean up look at my shirt <laughs> hard working bloke no i'll give it a wash eventually i just want to these are old shirts and you know i'm just trashing them because i don't want to wear uh the long sleeve stuff until winter so we'll just trash this and i've got a uh, set of overalls so i'll wear then and do that but until now um we're just gonna wear the old uh two dollar op shop rags until they uh they get trashed so now anyway, i'm going to um hit it with a little sander disc and we'll clean that up uh do the back side with the brass wire wheel so just along there clean that up prime it and uh then i'll i'll um start having a crack at the um the jeep tub my problem with that is that um, because it's on saw horses, they're just cheapy ones from the hardware store. They're not, not very good. Uh, so I can't, I can't climb into the tub and lay down on my back and get in a scrub on it. So I'll do what I can, sort of leaning in, which isn't the best way to do it. Oh, excuse me, gents. It's not the best way to do it because it's going to be... Uh, obviously a bit of strain on my back so we'll get in there and we'll just scrape out the uh, the obvious stuff and um, get a bit of uh, a primer on, on that so that that's not a big issue and um, call it a night we're not going to be doing much tonight so um, yeah I'll uh, get this done and I'll show you the results okay Jen so as you can see in here and I know it's it's probably hard to see and it's hard for me to see too. Uh, this is the the crusty rust I was kind of talking about, and we still got the um, the screws for the the firewall padding on there. Then they've still got some crusty stuff in there as well, and it all sort of goes all the way across the other side. But that gives you it gives you a bit of an idea. I've already had a bit of a scrape at it, as you can see, and we've got to sort of get the rest of that that off and uh, we'll wire wheel that um, I don't think we're going to get that done today but we'll go and uh, have a quick crack at it and this is the floor as you can see we've still got to um, just grind back these welds the floor it is original um, it does need a lot of cleaning up still to do on it as you can see it's still very rusty we still need to fix some bits on it and um, clean it up, clean up the fuel tank and also the, bear with me for a sec guys, I'll get the torch out so I can show you. We've got to sort of fix this section here. This is the, um, for the, for the fuel tank strap. So we're going to get stuck into that. So like I said, it's pretty rusty, it's pretty crusty. Lots of work to do on it. But uh, we'll get it done. Cheers, guys. Righto, guys. Well, uh, God, jeez. Yeah, it's just so humid. As you can see, the sweat's just dripping off me, and uh, things are things are things are literally starting to get mouldy around here. Um, it's really quite kind of like this. See that, guys? Okay. This is how wet it is. It's been raining like five days straight. And we've got more rain coming, so everything's everything's rusty, everything's moldy. <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm not going to hit that uh, the un underneath that cow tonight. Um, it really needs. Uh, I really need to get up underneath it and get hooked into it, and you know, spend a, spend a good hour just just doing some detail uh, scrubbing with it with different wire brushes and whatnot, and then uh, we can we can hit it with some primer. Um, I'll probably just use this rather than the um, rust encapsulator uh, only because the rust encapsulator is pretty pricey and I think it comes from the distributor in Sydney and uh, the main highways up here at the moment are under about five, six, seven foot of water. So they're going to be like that for a couple of, couple of days, maybe a week. Um, so there's no point ordering it now. We'll just, you know, we'll order it. Um, Probably, probably next week or something. So we'll do that. So what I'm going to do now, uh, where did I put that thing? 
I'm going to get that uh, battery tray uh, a quick clean up, a quick wire up. I've got to put a, there it is. Okay, kind of put a little bit of sheet metal in, in that side there for the um, for the hooks for the tray. I'll melt this, melt this out, weld up these holes real quick. And uh, yeah, we'll just give it a, we'll give it a quick once over. Um, what I might do, actually, do I have any left? Not there, not there, not there. CLR, full, maybe not. Uh, yeah, deep. CLR, I have some. So I think what I might do, I might give this a quick, um, a quick rub down with this. Hit that, uh, hit that rust, clean that rust off a bit, give it a good scrub, and we'll, we'll prime it, unless I can say, that's that done. This thing's just sitting around for weeks. You wouldn't think something so simple would take so long to do, but I guess I did have to bash it, smash it, and crash it into, into shape. So we'll, um, we'll do that for tonight, and that'll be it. We'll hook into that, um, that cow probably tomorrow. My main concern is uh, I've got to get something underneath it to uh, support my body weight. You know, I'm, I'm a big bloke, I'm a big boy, as you all know. So I need to I need to climb into it and lie down and work up like that to get into it. Um, and the way it is with the, that flimsy little saw horse, it's one of them cheapy ones with the metal legs that have a butterfly clip and they, they don't sit right and whatever. So I... Um, I'm not, I don't want to climb into it because I just know that thing's probably going to come crashing down and I've got the engine block sitting underneath it. So I'll come up with some solution tomorrow so I can get in there, I can clean it because it, ne it needs to get done um, and start working on that. I've been putting it off for a year um, because every time I work on it, I find something else that needs to get done on it and it's it's just it's just doing my head in. I know there's, there's lots of little fiddly things, there's lots of little holes and, and rot and whatnot. <coughs> and... Um, it's all original sheet metal, and yeah, I, I understand why now some guys just just pull out the old floor and put in a brand spank a new floor, and maybe kind of I guess in hindsight I probably should have done it, but um, I think it costs around about seven hundred fifty to eight hundred dollars for for a new front section floor. Uh, the riser. Which is pretty good. I probably wouldn't really. I've, I've repaired that, so it doesn't really need to get done. It's just a little, a little bit that needs to get fixed in there. Um, and the rear floor is somewhere around the three hundred. So for about a thousand dollars, that's what it would cost to replace the floor. Plus, you got to drill out all them spot welds and um, weld it all back in, <coughs> and do that when it's clean metal, and then you know get sent it off to get set out, sandblasted or, or, or whatnot. And um, it was already sandblasted, shit, two years ago now. <laughs> so, I might as well just get on with it. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna quickly do this, fix this, finish this off, um, and then that'll do for tonight. And we'll get some work done tomorrow. Cool. <laughs>sweating getting dirty for the night uh, okay so the second um, wind deflector for the radiator cowl is done it's uh, welded together come up pretty nice um, I've just gone and thrown it on the on the uh, the cowl with the other one I'll throw some photos in for that that's that's pretty much um, all that stuff's done uh, I've just got to finish off the the hole in the brace, the radiator brace, and what else I got to do? The grill, the center part of the grill. Uh, I think the two brush guards for the lights are done, and just figure out what bolts I need to get for those, and then that's that whole front section done. 
Uh, I can then send off the radio to get pressure tested. I know it's got a hole in the bottom tank, it's just a small pinhole. But I'll get that um, I'll get that fixed up. It's probably gonna cost me somewhere in the vicinity six to eight hundred bucks, because that's what they charge here in Australia for stuff. So um, yeah, just to get that cleaned up, repainted, um, pressure tested and ready to go. Uh, so that'll be that done. And then what else do I have to do after that? The hood, the fenders, and then the cowl, connected to the floor, and that'll be the whole front section done. And then we will be starting to work on the, uh, on the rear section. But in order to work on that, to get the cowl and the floor and the rear section for the Dodge, WC51, done. We need to get the Jeep tub finished and out of the garage onto the frame, get them both painted, uh, get them, get them on, made it onto the frame. And even if it's just sitting on the frame for now, obviously I've got to get a wiring harness, I've got to put the uh, the gearbox and transfer case and everything into it uh, to do that. But just to get it out of the garage and uh, get a tarp over it so it's <coughs> it's protected from the, from the elements. And it gives me the, gives me the opportunity to, to get some, some space in the garage to, to start doing some work. Um, which also helps to get work done on the uh, Jeep engine and the Dodge engine and uh, any other bits we need to get done or we need space because at the moment like I, I'm, I'm literally working in a space that's about they, that wide okay and about the same like it's a little box I've got so many parts everywhere so many of them are just parts that need to be cleaned up wire wheeled and primed and whatnot and um and then painted so when we do a paint day when the weather starts getting a bit more predictable um the humidity starts getting a bit drier uh, it is it is especially today after the rain um down my eyelash after the rain it's 100 percent humidity and i think we're expecting more rain for thursday thursday friday and, and storms so you know it's like La Nina uh, weather here in the uh, southern hemisphere over in Australia and um, it's our turn to get wet and then we're gonna have I think that rain's supposed to be going most of the way through our autumn and then it's probably gonna be a really really cold winter which I'm not really looking forward to um, but we're gonna have to sort of push ourselves and get down here and, and, and get stuff done because it's been dragging on for way too long so, gents, it's time for uh, shower, dinner, and uh, chill time. And uh, I want to say thanks for tuning in. Um, I haven't got many subscribers at the moment. I think I've got about 37, 38 subscribers. I've got more guys on uh, my Instagram, which is um, olive underscore drab underscore garage. So it's olive underscore drab underscore garage. Um, jump on there. You see probably uh, more sort of roughly daily, if I can. Um, snippets and updates that I sort of throw on there. It's just easier to update on there than what it is to do it on uh, on YouTube. Um, but guys, subscribe onto YouTube. I see a lot of you uh, view my stuff, um, but, but you're not subscribed. And um, it kind of helps me get the content out there. Um, I'm, not, I'm not in it for anything. I'm not in it to make money. I'm not in it to get famous. I just want to share what I do with the Jeeps and the Dodge. And, the Dodge. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm sure there's probably guys out there that are in the same position as me who don't know what they're doing and just want somebody to give them a little bit of maybe inspiration. He's been there before. Um, they can see what they need to do or whatnot. Even just to entertain you when you're having a cup of coffee. I'm, I'm happy just to to entertain you so you know subscribe like share tell everybody when i get a chance to get back on facebook uh on the frontline motor pool i'll i'll start throwing up some links so some more guys can uh, have a look at that and we can uh hopefully move on from there um i am tossing up the idea of doing a like a gofundme thing at the moment uh, not too impressed with GoFundMe uh, because of the money that they stole from the Canadian truckers protesting, which I think is their 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 right, their human right. 
uh, let alone a legal and constitutional right to protest against the government. The government are public servants. They work for us. They should do what we want them to do, not what they want to do. And I don't care if they come from a rich family, have connections to the communists. You work for us. That's just the way it goes. You don't like it, chuff off. So uh, I may not go through GoFundMe. There's another company, but I'll, I'll do my research. What I'm basically thinking of throwing up there is uh, uh, a GoFundMe to get a GoPro camera. Um, you know, it, it's it, you guys know it's hard when you got a family, mortgage bills, and uh, and you're trying to work on the vehicles to to scrimp and save every little cent that you can to buy tools, to buy parts, to buy um, you know cleaning things and spray paints and all that sort of stuff and. Uh, here in Australia, things are really, really expensive. So to get a GoPro, you're looking around the vicinity of about 600 bucks, um, plus uh, a little tripod. And I just wanna, I wanna get something like that so I can make it easier to do these videos. I'm doing it with a with a smashed up, broken iPad at the moment with a screen that's just shattered. And uh, I, I just want to get something that's a little bit more knock around robust. I can get it right up into those little nooks and crannies, and I can I can take you in there with me and show you the stuff I want to show you that what I'm, I'm working on, and get right in there into detail. And um, if I'm going to do that, I, I also need to uh, to get a new laptop computer because my laptop that I've got now, I think it's running oh Windows XP. It's probably well over 12, 13 years old, and it's just slow as. Um, so we'll probably be looking at maybe getting a, a new laptop. So obviously throw you know another thousand or two on top of that, probably two grand for that. So I'm tossing up whether I'll do a, a GoFundMe for that. I just I'll see what I go. I'll see what happens. But obviously we need a GoPro. So if, if you guys can help out, let me know. Um, you know if you want to throw me a couple of bucks here and there, and we'll get a GoPro, and uh, we'll get get the content out quicker, and uh, we'll get some better content rather than than trying to do it with, on a uh, on a broken iPad. Anyway guys, like I said, time for dinner shower. I've got to go. Um, I just want to say before I go, um, some of you know uh, my, my wife is uh, Ukrainian and with everything that's going on in Ukraine right now, uh, it's very emotional for her. She's having some ups and downs. She sees the wins, she sees the losses and um, it's, it's quite upsetting for her knowing that family and friends are over there um, dealing with this and and seeing the destruction, the wanton destruction and the and the, the murder that uh, Russia seems to be doing to Ukraine. Uh, the rest of the world is with you, Ukraine, and uh, Australia is definitely with you. We are sending supplies, uh, military supplies, non-lethal and lethal, to support and help you guys. Um, if I could go there and help you out, I, I definitely would. Um, even if it means just running around with medical supplies and helping helping guys, I just want to I want to be able to help you out and do something. So um, Australia's with you, we're with you. Uh, glory to Ukraine, and uh, I think they say Slava Ukraina. I've probably got that wrong. I'll have to ask my wife; she knows it better. But uh, I also want to say to the uh, the ghost of Kiev. That awesome, amazing pilot who's uh, knocking down those Russian birds. Mate, you're a three-time ace now. I think you've uh, got 16 as your tally. Well done. You are, you are a hero of the people. You are a champion. You are a legend. And uh, you're a modern-day ace. So to the ghosts of Ukraine, uh, all the best, buddy. Keep knocking down them birds and uh, show them bastards what you guys are made of. So anyway, guys, have a great night. I'll catch up with you later. And um, peace. See you.